So good morning to everybody. Uh, today I'm uh, Stefania Tosi and today I'm going to present uh, my research activity uh, during my PhD studies. The title of my research is uh, Performance Models for Evaluation and Management of Large Internet Systems and Applications and my tutor is uh, Professor Michele Colaianni. So the evaluation and management of the large amount of uh, hardware and software components uh, uh, that characterize large, large internet systems requires uh, uh, effective performance models that should be able to support real-time uh, decisions on the basis of the huge amount of uh, variable and heterogeneous data that comes from the monitoring of uh, system resources and uh, network traffic. Uh, in this context, uh, the state of the art uh, in uh, performance modeling uh, presents many limits. First of all, uh, existing solutions suffer from a relative lack of scalability, since they try to um, analyze the huge amount of raw and non-aggregated data that comes from monitors. Second, uh, they are not general enough to be applied to the heterogeneity of uh, data that uh, characterizes large uh, internet systems and that are monitored from uh, different resources, uh, resources at different time scales uh, and uh, at different uh, abstraction levels. And then uh, they um, are characterized by poor performance uh, when they are applied to highly variable uh, and noisy data as uh, the system and network metrics uh, are. So during these years, I tried to overcome uh, all these limits by proposing novel uh, solutions uh, for addressing uh, all these goals. For uh, big data treatment, uh, for uh, anomaly detection, uh, correlation analysis, data clustering uh, and uh, predictive analytics. For a matter of time, uh, I won't go into details of all the solutions I propose. I will only give you an idea of the solutions and uh, what are the main advancements uh, with respect of the, the state of the art in performance modeling. So starting from uh, big data treatment, uh, I proposed a solution that uh, is able to improve scalability by reducing the huge amount of data to analyze uh, to only a subset of uh, information that uh, are relevant for management. Uh, this is done uh, through three consecutive steps. Uh, the first step is a step of analysis of information where uh, data is analyzed in order to distinguish those information in data that are relevant to those that uh, otherwise are not relevant and can be discarded and not analyzed. So uh, relevant information is the only subset of data that uh, undergoes uh, um, further analysis in order to distinguish those relevant information that are correlated to those that are otherwise are low correlated. Uh, this first step bases on the singular value decomposition for the um, analysis of uh, relevant and non-relevant information and uh, on uh, correlograms and on the spectral analysis of, Fur of Fourier in order to understand uh, uh, in order to distinguish correlated and low correlated data. Then uh, starting from the results of the first step, uh, at the second step uh, we can uh, use information about uh, not relevant uh, correlated and low correlated information in order to classify servers uh, into three behavioral classes. Those servers that are deterministic, uh, those that are random uh, and those that are negligible. This information is ex extremely useful is if uh, passed to decision support systems because uh, we can uh, allow to apply the most adequate models uh, to, the to the different characteristics of uh, resources and servers. Then uh, at the third step, uh, we can, um, by appropriately uh, aggregating the information uh, uh, regarding data streams uh, having the same main uh, statistical properties, we can represent the overall system behavior through few uh, representative views, for example, uh, uh, one, con, um, one uh, comprising all the determinism uh, of the system and one comprising all the randomness of the system. So the main contribution of these, uh, solutions, of this solution is uh, the fact that uh, it uh, improves scalability in the sense uh, that it re reduces the um, amount uh, of data to analyze to the only analysis of two representative views. Another uh, main contribution is the fact that uh, we can inform uh, decision support systems about the characteristics of the server in order to apply the most adequate models to the different characteristics of data. And another uh, contribution uh, is in terms of uh, anomaly detection, as I will uh, explain uh, later. So the anomaly detection uh, problem was faced uh, under different perspectives. 
um, by basing on the different definition of what an anomaly is. So during my studies, uh, I addressed the problem of state change detection, of collective anomaly detection, and of uh, behavioral anomaly detection. So starting from state change detection, here uh, a change is uh, a variation in one of the characteristics of the data streams uh, that can be, for example, the standard deviation or, in this case, uh, a change in the mean of the data. Existing solutions for uh, state change detection uh, are effective except when uh, they are applied to highly variable data. And so, in highly variable context, uh, we decide to approach the state change detection problem uh, through two uh, steps, a uh, load representation and uh, a detection rule. So the solution that we proposed combines uh, two key ingredients. As load representation, we, um, uh, adopted, uh, we adapted uh, the wavelet-based ratification to work online, uh, in, and we choose the wavelet uh, solution because uh, it is able to eliminate uh, random non-Gaussian errors uh, while uh, retaining the main features uh, for, of the original data. And uh, this representation is combined with uh, an, on, an adaptive implementation of the Kuzum based rule uh, that uh, allows to keep the detector performance close to optimal in terms of uh, both, uh, the, both minimize the rate of uh, false detection and the delay of the detection. A similar approach was used uh, in, in order to detect collective anomalies. Uh, here, an anomaly is a collection of uh, consecutive samples uh, that are uh, anomalous with respect to the entire time series. For example, here the samples in the encircled regions uh, are a uh, collective anomalies, anomaly because um, this uh, low variability uh, persists for uh, an abnormal long time uh, with respect to the seasonal behavior of the, of the time series. And um, also in this case, uh, we decided in a highly variable context to approach the the problem with, through, with uh, two steps. As a load representation here, we decided to adopt uh, an uh, online, IMA, online ARIMA prediction model because uh, this prediction model is able to um, reproduce uh, and forecast in the future the seasonal behavior seen uh, before in the time series. And this is um, combined again with uh, an adaptive implementation of the Kuzum model, where here the adaptivity uh, depends uh, on the standard deviation of the time series and on the interval of prediction of the ARIMA model. Then uh, the third, step, the third uh, type of um, anomaly detection that uh, I analyzed was the behavioral anomaly detection. And uh, as I said before, uh, it comes uh, uh, from the steps of the big data treatment solution. So um, um, by, by comparing the results uh, of two consecutive evaluation of the big data treatment solutions, solution, um, each time uh, a server experiences a change from a behavioral class to another one, we can detect uh, a behavioral anomaly and uh, activate some uh, strategies to investigate uh, the reasons of this change. So all the anomaly detection solutions that I proposed uh, were able to identify all and only relevant changes and anomalies in the data in a timely fashion, in a timely fashion and um, the high, high performance and results that they achieved in uh, data uh, coming from system monitors and network flows uh, demonstrated their ability to uh, detect anomalies also in highly variable context. So moving to data correlation, uh, I proposed uh, a new correlation index that was able to identify linear and nonlinear correlation among uh, highly variable data streams. So also in this case, existing solution, for example, as the Pearson index, uh, the Spearman rank, the Kendall rank, or, or the LOCO index, um, have uh, uh, poor results uh, when they are applied to data that uh, present uh, a high variability that hits uh, the correlation between the data. And so, to um, uh, solve this problem, we proposed a solution that bases uh, on the singular value decomposition in order to extract the main uh, principal components uh, in the data. 
And then uh, through the Hearst uh, analysis, uh, we extract from these principal components uh, those that are the trend components uh, of each uh, a data stream. Then, uh, by comparing the trend components of uh, two data streams, uh, we can compute the correlation index. So the closer are the um, trend components of two data streams, uh, the higher is the correlation index uh, uh, between them. And so, thanks, uh, thanks to this solution, we were able to um, identify correlation uh, even among data coming from system monitors where, uh, this, the, where the correlation between uh, the data stream uh, is uh, usually hidden by this uh, noise uh, and uh, perturbation. Another important contribution of this um, correlation index is uh, for cluster analysis because uh, I use this, um, the correlation index that I proposed uh, as a similarity measure for clustering. That means that uh, I wanted to group together in the same cluster uh, uh, elements that are correlated, while not correlated data belongs uh, to different clusters. And so I adapted a hierarchical clustering algorithm to use this um, uh, new correlation index, and uh, I found that uh, it achieved uh, high results uh, in finding servers with uh, related functionalities and network traffic flows uh, sharing the same statistical properties. Then finally, I will show you what I've done during my six months internship at IBM in New York. Um, here, the problem was that um, now when a user try to uh, wants, um, ask for a cloud, service, a cloud service, he has the possibility to choose among a multitude of different cloud providers, providers offering the similar service. So the question is, um, is there any one of these cloud providers that should I prefer? and they should uh, satisfy my needs uh, most. And so in order to, res to respond to this uh, question, uh, uh, we proposed an adaptive method that uh, automatically selects uh, the best cloud provider uh, among, uh, um, in a, mul a multi-cloud environment uh, that is able to satisfy most the user-specific needs. This solution uh, um, combines the machine learning and predictive analytics. Machine learning is used to learn from the past the performance of each cloud provider uh, by basing on previous provided services, while predictive analytics is used to model and predict the performance of each cloud provider against uh, the different uh, needs uh, of the users. And so uh, we proposed a new method for uh, cloud service selection in a multi-cloud environment that is uh, adaptive in, in the sense that uh, it updates uh, the prediction models uh, with uh, new incoming requests, thus making the solution um, dynamic and flexible to the changes uh, in the user preferences and uh, in the cloud provider properties. It is uh, customized in the sense that um, it is uh, direct to fulfill the specific needs uh, of the individual users. And uh, it is uh, objective driven because uh, different policies for best cloud selection are provided and uh, uh, according to um, the different definition of what the best cloud means and also the user can uh, provide uh, its own definition of uh, best. So this uh, contribution concludes uh, uh, my presentation. This is a list of my publication divided by journals, international conferences, and the um, book chapters and the technical reports and patents that I filed with uh, IBM. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>